sorry, it just made me forget. Something old, something new? Hair dryer. Ah, one in the hotel, wasn't there? Yeah, with a faulty plug and tacky finger mark from the last 15 users. I'll take me own, thank you. Ah, there's nothing tacky about the place we're going to. It was voted best hotel in the Cotswolds last year. Yes, for its food, not its hair dryer. You're not taking a travel plug, are you? You don't fancy a stroll round block, do you, know, to walk off your breakfast? Point taken. All right, I'll leave you to it. Oh, you haven't any uh, paracetamol handy, have you? Yeah, I've been bathroom. Ah. Hey, why? Are you all right? Well, it's just a bit of a hangover after that champagne we had last night. Oh, other well, ain't cabinet. How many do you yeah. want? Rita, it's not what you're thinking. If I went on red alert every time I had a headache, I'd have died from anxiety long ago. Now, you get on with your packet. I'll get them. Right. Hello? Derek, you do know what day it is. Well, can't Mavis do it? You just jiggle the cash button. Oh, hang on, I'll be down in a minute. Oh, well, that's Derek. He's jammed the till. Well, isn't Mavis there? <sighs> She's at the hairdresser's. I tell you, if you left that bloke with a disconnected plug by dinner time, the entire street would be without electricity. <laughs> Shan't be long. Sorry, Curly. It's never done this before. Um, well, perhaps if I press this one. Oh, no, that's no good. Oh, Rita. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to disturb your nuptial preparations, but if you could just give me the precise manoeuvre, then, then I'll know. Ah. All right? Yes. Good. Uh, Rita, uh, could I have a quick word? It's about the house. Well, can't it wait? I was hoping to get wed sometime today. Yeah, I know, but we've got the surveyor's report, you see, and the building society, well, they reckon there's a lot of things wrong with the structure. What sort of things? It's well, only been up ten years. Well, there's damp patches, flaky paintwork, and the window frames, they're all rotten, you see, because they put the wrong wood in. And... You're not suggesting Len Fairclough Jerry built it, I hope. Oh, no, no, no. You want me to drop the price, is that it? Well, uh, 28 I think... I'll knock $2,000 off, all right? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Any more problems or can I get back to my wedding? Oh, no, 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 that's no, fine. Please. Fine, thank you. Hey, do you think if I'd held out for 27... If I were you, I'd scarf her quick before she comes back and changes her mind. You're right. Mm. The question now is, will all this generosity melt the heart of Derek Walton? Sorry, I, I don't get your drift. Well, I'll spell it out for you. Are you going to go round looking like a jug of sour milk for the rest of your life because you didn't get your way over this place? Or are you going to bury the hatchet and go to that young lady's wedding? I have my reasons for staying away. Um, that, that, that's £2.20. It's your brain that'll be addled, not mine. I heard of a fellow once that got addicted to the sound of car alarms going off. He lived in a street where they kept getting broken into. Drove him mad at first, but then after a while, he got so that he couldn't sleep without the sound of one ringing. He used to pray for windy nights. Look, I have to be here for the evening papers. She's not getting married this evening, Derek. The world won't come to an end if you shut up shop for an extra hour this dinner time. Shall I hold the fort for ten minutes? Sorry? It's a lovely cardy, Derek, but not the sort of thing you'd wear to a wedding. Find the paracetamol? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine now. Yeah, hey, I don't know. Come Can here, I... <laughs> fellas. You haven't done your shirt buttons up properly. There is something wrong, isn't there? No, I'm fine. Well, actually, my, my hand does feel a bit numb. That's one of the symptoms, isn't it? Hey, you need a doctor. Oh, don't be silly. It's not that serious. Anyway, there isn't time. Well, we'll soon see how serious it is. Huh? Try picking that up and put it on my finger. <sighs> well, 
Where's your jacket? I'm taking you to hospital. There you go. That's two pounds seventy-five, Miss. You need something inside you when you go to that place. How is it? No idea. I'm spoken to him properly since our wedding day. Are you nervous? Well, I know what that phrase means now. Heart in your mouth. Don't worry. It'll be all right. Hope so. Yeah. Well, you've not gone to see the escape prisoner recommit yourself, then? What, you're Terry? No, that Ted Sullivan fellow, the one who's getting spliced to Rita. I mean, he's had one reprieve already, hasn't he, when his wife shook a seven? Now here he is again, volunteering for another sentence. He's got to be start raving mad. Well, that's a very cynical view, if I may say. It's going to be a poorer world if we all felt like that. I never realised you believe in martyrdom, Percy. I believe in the solemn estate of matrimony. I'm looking forward to Mrs Bishop getting back this evening and telling me about the wedding. Now, if you just excuse me, I'll go and find more amenable company, if you don't mind. I'm afraid it is what you imagine. It's a classic early symptom of a new tumour. When did the numbness start? About five days ago. Huh. I tried to pretend it hadn't happened. Hoped it'd go away. We're getting married today. Congratulations. Thank you. So, uh, what happens next? It's all right, Doctor. I don't want protecting from the truth. Well, it won't be too serious to begin with. Dizzy spells, headaches, numbness like you've had this morning. Go on. Then it will become more serious. Blackouts, possibly fits or minor strokes until... until you're completely incapacitated. I'm sorry to be so morbid. How long will this take? Impossible to say. Two months, two years. We'll monitor you as closely as possible, of course, but that's about all we can do. Well, I'll, uh, I'll leave you to it. Why didn't you tell me? It frightened me. I didn't want to scare you. We've been through all this. I know what I'm taking on. Do you? You only know in theory. Neither of us really knows what's going to happen, do we? Look, Rita, if you want to pull out, it's okay by me. I understand. Your decision now. And a change of heart, I see, Derek. Oh, I was never really serious about not coming. Not for an old friend like Rita. Little bell rang inside his conscience. Isn't that right, Derry? Has anybody seen Emily this morning? Yeah, yes, we saw her earlier on, maybe. She uh, offered her a lift, actually, but she got one or two things to do first. Splashed out on a new hat by the oh, look yeah. of it. Looked dead smart, didn't she? <laughs> you must be Mavis, from the cabin. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Roger Brooks, Ted's nephew. Oh, I'm very pleased to meet you. I'll be popping in in a couple of weeks' time or so with some new rangers. I took over from Uncle Ted some time ago at uh, Cartwright's. Yes, we gathered. Uh, this is my husband, Derek. He works in the shop with me. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard about you. Well, how do you do, anyway? Honoured, I'm sure. Uh, may I present my mother, Sarah Brooks, Ted's sister? Oh, Mavis and Derek Wilton. Uh, hello. How do you do? Well... Emily had better look sharp or she'll miss the boat. Don't oh, mind Emily. Where's Ted and Rita? I think 
it up here. Hey, hold your horses. I think they can wait five minutes. <laughs> Look, stay here in. You'd think you've been on a life and death mission. <laughs> Rita, thanks. You don't think I'd let you down at last minute, do you? I think you're all wonderful. I could never have blamed you. I'm not going to let you go in a hurry, mister. You're too important. Right. How do I look? Sensational. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did you see that? Peggy! Oh, it gets exceptional. I'm just getting on more. Nice, you? Yeah. Right. I think that's Aww. everything. Shall we go before Mavis starts panicking? Now the solemn moment has come. These two persons to contract the marriage before you, their witnesses. Will you all please stand? Put the ring on Rita's hand and hold it there. Now, repeat after me. I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Edward John Sullivan, to witness that I, Edward John Sullivan, do take thee, Rita Fairclough, do take thee, Rita Fairclough, to be my lawful wedded wife, to be my lawful wedded wife. Put the ring on Edward's hand and hold it there. Now, repeat after me, I call upon these persons here present. I call upon these persons here present. To witness that I, Rita Fairclough. To witness that I, Rita Fairclough. Do take thee, Edward John Sullivan. Do take thee, Edward John Sullivan. To be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Edward John Sullivan and Rita Fairclough. You have both made the declaration prescribed by law and made a solemn and binding contract with each other in the presence of these witnesses here assembled. It is therefore my pleasure to tell you that you are now husband and wife. Mrs. Bishop, are you all right? Hello, Mr. Sugden. Yes, I am fine, thanks. I haven't got anything for dinner, I'm afraid. Well, what are you doing? It's gone one o'clock. You should be at the wedding. Oh, I decided not to go in the end. I set off, but... Uh, I saw a little girl in the shopping precinct, crying. She looked ever so sad. Wrong to be celebrating when there's so much suffering in the world. But you can't let things like that stop you enjoying yourself. You've got enough on your plate. Oh, I'm all right now. I came across some old letters I thought I'd lost, and they make very interesting reading. I'm surprised you can see in this light. Well, I never realised my father was in India for seven years. I thought it was only five. He's a sergeant major, you know. Yes, you have mentioned it before. Such a good man. Yes, I'm sure he was, Mrs. Bishop. I'm sure he was. I was looking forward on my retirement to the life of the carefree bachelor, and it was with some dismay that I suddenly realised I was falling in love with the lady to whom I'd been selling sweets for the last 20 years. I think it was on that day that I left the cabin, and I suddenly realised I had no idea whether she'd ordered pear drops or barley sugars. <laughs> I think it was then that I knew something was up. Well, we've come a long way since then. And I've been privileged to get to know a woman who is warm, sincere, amusing, and for someone who's taken on a man with one foot in the geriatric ward, extremely courageous. If I can love her as much as she's loved me, we won't go far wrong. Now, it is the custom of the groom 
to toast the bridesmaids when he's finished boring everyone else. <laughs> but since we don't happen to have any bridesmaids, I ask you all to raise your glasses and drink to my bride, the one and only, Rita. 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 That all went very smoothly, didn't it? Roger's very good at organising this kind of thing. Well, let's hope it's not only weddings he's good at organising. Sorry? He's the sweetest salesman at the news agents where Derek and I work. Oh, of course. <laughs> Derek, you are keeping an eye on the time, aren't you? I don't want you to miss those papers. Yes, yes, I am. How are you feeling? I'm all right now. We're at half past nine this morning. I think I know how that Greek fella felt. Him with the globe on his shoulder. Oh, wow, well, what happened? A long night and a couple of large vodkas and tonic. I might get round to tell it. So everything's all right, though. I mean, you've no regrets. He's a very special man, Audrey. And when they're that special, you don't pull out at last minute, even though you know it's not going to be a bed of roses. Oh, Rita, slow. I just wanted to thank you for everything you've done for Ted. We've done a lot for each other. I know, but jokes about geriatric needs apart. He told you about the operation he had a few years ago, hasn't he? Yes. Well, <laughs> he looks so much better since he's met you. Roger and I just can't get over it. Well, thank you very much. We weren't sure whether he'd make a complete recovery or not, but now, well, I know he's going to have a long and happy retirement with you. Oh, hey, love. How did it go? All right. How is it? Well, this can be expected. Oh, I asked him again why he ran away. What did he say? Well, he said he didn't plan it. He did want to marry me. See, I told you. Yeah, I know, but I just... I just wanted to hear him say it again. So you're feeling better now? <laughs> People's lives are supposed to start when they get married. It just seems so stopped. Oh, don't say that, love. Oh, I'll tell you that, Curly. It were all I could do to stop throttling today. Oh, I'm best caring. The fact is, Terry's in prison. Fretting about who put him there isn't going to get him out, is it? Oh, don't. <laughs> Now, you sure you've done the right thing? <laughs> well, if I haven't, I've left it a bit late. <laughs> It'll be life for Riley, won't it? <laughs> no money worries it. They say married men live longer, you know, but I've got to tell you that I've had more trouble with my heart since I married old Audrey than ever I did when I was a widower. <laughs> you sure you're not digging an early grave for yourself? No. Well, I'll have to chance it, won't I? How about another drink? He's oh. had enough already, sir. I wouldn't say no. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Oh. That, Rita. Oh, don't worry. At least I know you didn't tell him out. I mean, he couldn't come out with a crack like that if he knew the truth, could he? Best of luck, kid. Oh, thanks for coming, love. Now, I won't give Curly your honeymoon address, unless you want building estimates posting on to you. Oh, do you know, he collared me this morning, wanting me to drop the price of number seven. Cheeky monkey, I hope you told him where to get off. Well, no, I didn't, actually. I'd bigger fish to fry at the time. You did it with style, though, love. Now, often you see a fella getting what he wants and still going off with a flea in his ear. Well, what's two grand on your wedding day? Hey, I'm talking about weddings. Oh. Don't forget to invite me to your silver. You'll be top of the list, love. I've brought the car round to the front. Where's Uncle Ted? Oh, he went off with Alf. I'll show you. Oh, thank yes. you. Oh, well, I hope everything goes all right for you, love. Oh, no. I mean, you deserve it if anybody does. Come on, don't start getting yeah. maudlin. We're going to have a few laughs as well. Don't you worry. Right. Come on, love, the waiting. Have I got everything? Well, there goes one very contented lady if ever I saw one. Yes. Come on, Audrey. Hello. Come on. How did I know it'd be you? Ah, it's because I'm on your mind. You're persistent, I'll give you that. That's a good chance. Uh, I thought I'd just call around as a friend, like, for a chat. Ah, oh, there's no harm in that, is there? I don't know, is there? Uh, you can let me in then, or what? 
I'm off out in 20 minutes. Yeah, it won't take long. I promise. Oh, how did it go? Smashing. She looked fabulous. We all had a good cry. Ah, lovely service. All that was missing was Emily. Well, where was she? Well, nobody knows. She was seen setting it off. It's nothing to do with you, is it, Percy? You've not been dragging her bowling again, have you? She came home with an upset stomach, if you must know. It's nothing to do with me. It's them doorstep sandwiches you've been feeding her. Have you seen the size of them? Huh? You need grappling irons to get your teeth round them. <laughs> So, how are your wedding plans going? Oh, bubbling along. She's worrying about where to get her hair done. Oh. You haven't got any ideas, have you? Well, I'll do it myself if she likes. I did Lisa's, and well, everybody said how nice she looked. I think that's wise. Don't want to end up in a slammer with Terry. Well, you've got no guilty secrets, have you? Me? I'm as pure as a driven snow. Oh, well, you'll be all right then. <laughs> Now, look, Curly, I'm telling you, Vera is having a terrible time of it at the moment. She's not the only one. Yes, well, once you get married and you have some kids of your own, you perhaps understand a bit better. I understand more than you think. Anyway, if it's any consolation to you, I think that you did the right thing, ring it, please, about Terry. Thanks, Ivy. You don't know what that means to me. Oh, don't mention it, love. Going anywhere nice? Just the Chinese. I'm seeing other blokes, Don. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, you've got your life to get on with, haven't you? Yes, I have. Still, no reason why we shouldn't see each other every once in a while. I was wondering what you were doing on Monday. I'm going to be sisters. Later in the week? Next week's difficult. You're not making it easy for me, Julie. Why should I? Thank you. Curly lad, best day's work you ever did that. What? Shopping hour, Terry. And don't you worry, because you're going to send him down for the fair stretch this time, so you'll be safe for a couple of years. I've had as much of this as I can stand. Oh, your name might be mud with our Vera, but as far as I am concerned, son, you are a saint. I didn't shop your Terry. Oh, who did? Reg Oldsworth. Now, will you, Ivy, Vera, and anyone else who wants to put the two penneth in, please get off my back? <laughs> <laughs>